You guys saw in our last two videos, take this Hemi apart. So now what we're gonna do is start cleaning it up, start installing some new parts. We got a bunch of new parts for this Hemi to go in it. We have a new set of pistons for it because you guys saw that drill bit that nestled its way into that piston. There's a drill bit stuck in the cylinder head if you can see that right there. And it has nested its own spot in cylinder eight right there. So we got a set of DNJ pistons for it that come with new wrist pins. We will be showing you guys how to heat up connecting rods and actually press the pins out of them and install them. Fluffy's here today, boys and girls. What's up? And he is actually over here polishing the crankshaft on the 5.7. We have mic'd it out. It is nice and circular, so now all we need is a nice polish on this, so when we slap some new bearings on it, it's not gonna eat it away really fast. If you guys are wondering how he is polishing this crankshaft, we already have a video on how to polish a crankshaft. Check that out right here and that will show you guys on exactly how you polish a crankshaft and what you need to do to do it at home. I like to do a lot of the machine work at home to save money, plus it feels better to do it yourself than pay a machinist to do it. You can, DIY. You can pay a machinist to polish the crank, it's about 200 bucks. You can pay a machinist to swap out all those pistons and heat up those connector rods and press those pins out, but it always feels good when you can do it yourself at home in your garage. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our uh, rod piston assembly. You can see the wrist pins right here is actually stuck to the rod and not in the pistons. It moves freely in the pistons and it's actually heat shrunk to the connecting rod. So to take that off, we're gonna come over to our press. Hi Whitey. Right here, tools we're gonna need this. The first tool of course is a map gas torch. We're gonna need a press and we're gonna need some kind of fixture to actually put the piston on. So I built this little thing out of scrap metal that actually fits nicely on the piston right there. So we can press that wrist pin right out into it. Beautiful. So we're gonna set that guy right there. We're gonna set our piston and rod assembly right there. We're gonna take our socket, set it right there. We have a socket that's just a tiny bit smaller than the wrist pin itself so we can thoroughly go through it. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna get slight tension on the wrist pin itself, pushing down on that connecting rod. So it just holds itself in the fixture and everything. Then we're gonna take our map gas torch and we're gonna heat the sides of the connecting rod itself. I'm gonna hold it on each side for about 30 seconds and then keep heating until I can see a little bit of the metal change color. And then I'm gonna go to actually pressing this wrist pin out of this connecting rod. And that looks good to me. And now we're gonna actually start pressing this baby out. Pump a dump, pump a chump, pump a dump. Anything can be a hammer at least once. <laughs> and just like that guys, we got our connecting rod assembly out nicely. So then, now all we have to do that with, we already got two done, so this will be our third one done. So we got five more wrist pins to press out of the connecting rods, and then we can start putting it all together. We got one brand new DNJ piston on this boy right here. Um, so we're gonna show you guys how to heat this connecting rod up and install that wrist pin into it real quick. So you're gonna, again, need the map gas torch. You're gonna need your piston, your new wrist pin set up like this, because we're gonna heat the crap out of this uh, connecting rod right here. And then we're gonna set him in and then push the wrist pin all the way through. And that's how we're gonna install it. So first thing we're gonna do, of course, is heat the living life out of this connecting rod. And just like that, the blam. And you quickly bring her over, put her in all the way, and then this is going to cool down. Grab that wrist pin, and you're going to be good to go. So, again, we got to do this on all eight. We got two done. 
Um, knowing too that these are directional pistons, so the writing on the connecting rod goes to the opposite way of the actual arrow on the piston, so the blank side goes towards the arrow. So we have that memorized, and that's how we're going to do every single connecting rod and piston. Uh, again, these are standard bore DNJ pistons. They come with new wrist pins. They come with new pistons. Uh, I will link down below uh, the pistons we are using. They are actually eBay pistons because eBay build. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some eBay. How about you, JT? eBay. <laughs> I almost just dropped it into that thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude. So as you can see, I have polished these guys right here so far. This is what they looked like before. You can see a little bit of the grooving in here. And feel with my fingers. On these ones, nothing. Nice and smooth and polished, baby. Right? Yeah, baby! Yeah! <laughs> Mo power! Mo power! Again, you don't need to bring it to the machine shop. You can do it in your garage at home. All eight pistons are now installed onto our original connecting rods. As you guys saw us heat up the actual connector rod itself and slide in the wrist pin itself. So all eight are ready to go. JT's crankshaft is all nice and polished. Woohoo! Polished. Yeah. Like polished. 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 Perfectly polished. Ready to go. It needs to be cleaned and we need to spec it out. So when we measure bearing clearances, we are close and ready to go. So right now we got the block sitting over here. Uh, we got it all cleaned up. All the heads are cleaned up. Everything's cleaned up. So now we're going to hone the cylinders out and start gapping some piston rings. So we're going to show you guys how to do a nice hone and then how to gap those piston rings. And then the whole block itself, we are going to clean it. And then we'll start measuring bearing clearances and putting the whole thing together. A blam. Mm -hmm. Alright, next one. Here is we're going slow, but we're going fast up and down with it. So we get nice cross hatching like you can see in these twos compared to the one. You can see how much cross hatching we have in this cylinder compared to this cylinder right there that we haven't done yet. And that's just to set the piston ring so when we start it up, those piston rings seal nice and tight. And we're using brake clean, so we just set the guy in there and then have someone spray some brake clean. So we're gonna go slow speed, but we're gonna go up and down really fast. And I count to 10 in my head. Just like that. Uh, make sure if you stop halfway in the center, you don't just drag the stones out. So you either can spin it out like I do, or if you stop, actually reach your hand down, grab the stones, pull it out. So you don't put a nice scratch up the cylinder with the stones. We got our DNJ piston ring set right here. So we're gonna gap the piston rings. The top ring, we're gonna gap to 65 thousandths for every inch of bore, which comes out to 25 thousandths for our top ring. And then our second ring, our uh, bottom ring right here, we're gonna gap to 27 thousandths, which is seven thousandths for every inch of bore. Uh, that's a pretty good like nitrous boost gap on uh, engines. So that's what we are gonna go with because maybe in the future, we might have this boosted, we might have this nitrous, we don't really know at this point. So, first thing you want to do is you want to take one of your old pistons, or if you're reusing the pistons, just grab one of them. And you want your second ring on, you want to take your top ring off of it, because you're actually going to use this as an alignment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a top piston ring, and we're going to install it in the bore itself, right at the tippy top of it. And then, we're going to take our used piston that still has the second compression ring on it and we're going to use that as an alignment guide to push this guy down and nice and flat. So now you know that piston ring's in nice and flat in there. I saw that piston ring get installed and you can see the gap right there is what we're actually looking at. That is way too tight. We have our 25 thousandths feeler gauge right here and that is definitely not even close to fitting. So we're going to take our piston ring out nice and gently. And then we're going to take it over to our ring filer right here. Drive him down a little bit. So after we ground that down a little bit, we're going to have some burrs on here. So we're going to take our file and gently file it down a little bit to get rid of all our burrs. Now 
Alright, just like that. So now we're going to put it back in the piston that we're fitting it to. We're going to install him again, just like that. And then put him just like that. And you can see our gaps a little bit more than what we had before, but I'm guessing again with our 25,000 feeler gauge, it still doesn't fit, so we need some more filing. And we're gonna sit here and go back and forth between every cylinder, and we're gonna file fit to every single cylinder. So this is on cylinder two, this piston ring is. So this top piston ring will go on cylinder two piston. And then this one, cylinder four piston ring will go on cylinder four piston. And we'll file fit the piston rings to the bore of the cylinder. And then we'll do that on every single one. And we'll do that on the second one. And then the oil ones, you guys don't need to fit. And then we'll put it all together. So we're gonna sit here and gap 16 piston rings and have a great time. All right guys, we got all 16 uh, piston rings gapped and now we're gonna actually clean the block. Um, we're gonna use a pressure washer and a little bit of soap and get this block nice and clean so we can start assembling it. Sorry for the wind noise, but we're gonna get to cleaning it. It's very windy. Somebody's in this side. Grab my switch. It's really warm. If, huh. the, if this video gets 100,000 likes, we will wash our cars, maybe even Whitey, in our bikinis. We'll go get bikinis and we'll go wash them, okay? 100,000 likes. Do it! Just JT. I will. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to see that. <laughs> Everybody want to see that. We're going to get a negative 100,000. No, they want to see all this fluff, You're dog. You're going to get demonetized. We're going to get negative 100,000 likes. <laughs> 100,000 dislikes. <laughs> So the block's all clean. We just got the crankshaft fully clean. It's polished. She is looking nice and polished and clean mm. and everything in between. Uh, main caps are cleaned up. Uh, bolts are clean because you guys saw all that gunk on these bolts when we took it apart. Uh, what else did we do? Gap piston rings. We got to clean all the pistons and rod assemblies. Uh, block's clean. Everything's ready to go together at this point. But we are going to call this a video guys, so in the next video we are going to show you guys how to install piston rings, how to measure main bearing clearance, how to measure connecting rod bearing clearance with a dial bore gauge. But as always guys, keep, keep it boosted, boosted and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.